Oh, you missed them out. Yeah, type in the chat box, England, Seattle, Toronto. How, how did you find the workshop? Waterloo. All right, KW. Good morning. As mentioned, my name is Jen. I am the community activator for the Border Crossings Project presented by the Art Gallery of Mississauga. So before we start, we would like to acknowledge the land on which we gather, on which the region of Peel operates. Just letting some people in. It's a treaty lens of the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit, and for thousands of years, Indigenous peoples inhabited and cared for this land. In particular, we acknowledge the territory of the Karen Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Ojibwe Chippewa peoples. The land that is home to the Métis, and most recently, the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, who are actually direct descendants of the Mississaugas of the Credit. So the Border Crossings Project is generally funded by the Ontario Chilean Foundation through the program and the Toronto Ontario Arts Council and City of Mississauga's Cultural Division. So again, Northern Ireland, thank you all so much for joining us and please keep joining us. We have so many other amazing workshops that are upcoming. We are planning out for the rest of the year. So there's going to be like 34 workshops and we want to bring you so many different types of versions of art and please make sure to check out our instagram and ensure that you check the youtube if you want to go back and look over the tips of what you've learned today so before we start we're going to start a poll here it's just to see where you're from which i've asked and if you've taken a border crossings project before so i see you steve and you're going to have to say yes <laughs> hello sir Uh, Lourdes, yes, so you got it from an email, perfect, just like to know, yeah, Eventbrite, just keep on checking it out, guys. All right, I'm going to just, all right, thank you very much. So I am going to introduce our lovely professional photographer, Karen. So if anyone has, as we know, uh, if anyone has any questions, type it in the chat or you can raise your little hand and I will be here to moderate and I will let you know and I will let Karen know what the questions are so while you facilitate, okay? All right, I'm gonna take myself off of the spotlight and there you go. Thanks. Hi everybody. My goodness, there's no pressure at all. We're having across the sea, across the oceans to Ireland and all of GTA. That's great. Thank you for having me, Jen. Um, this is so super exciting for me. Um, a little bit nerve wracking just because of the, any of the training I've ever done um, for photography has all been in person. So this technology, I mean, I'm, I'm supposed to be a technical person, but right? I mean, like presentations like this is just, um, um, it, it's not new to me, but like having it online is um, a great space and I'm glad for technology. What will we do with our technology? So we have, um, today we're going to be talking about smartphones and photography put together. Um, so I am going to share my screen. Share my screen. Yeah, put in the chat box, would you? Um, everybody. What phones do you like or have? Right? Yeah, what phones do you have? Do you have an iPhone? Um, do you have a um, an Android phone? And what kind of Android phone you have? I mean, there's um, all types of types of phones. So today is going to be not specific to iPhone, not specific to Android, because um, it is, um, I don't actually have an iPhone. Um, Jen has an iPhone, so she might be showing her iPhone, um, and I have my Android, so I'll show that. Um, all Samsungs, all LGs, um, they have different screens, so I'll give you the general um, symbol, I guess, that we can look for on your phone. Um, if you can't find it, you know, afterwards, if you have a question, then definitely message me, um, and I'll help you, I'll try to help you out. Okay, so... 
multiple share screens. So which screen am I sharing? I'm sharing number three. Okay. And everybody can see the screen, right? Yep. All right. Beautiful. Okay. Karen, uh, individuals are asking if they need to take notes. And I just said, you guys can just refer back or you can actually use your phone to take a picture absolutely. of the slide if you have a question, guys. That, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I do have, um, I can put these, these notes into um, a little PDF. And um, since Jen's got um, the mailing list for all the, and recording, I guess, the attendees, I can actually make a PDF and send these notes to you if you'd like. So if you would like that, definitely put it in the chat box, notes in big letters. Um, and I can send, definitely take that list of who said notes in big letters and send that to you um, with the email address that you um, provided to um, the, uh, the Ever, did you use Everbrite, right? <laughs> It went uh, that point. Then bright, you're right. <laughs> and yes, everyone, you know what? We're just going to send it all to everyone. I love it. Thank you so mm -hmm. much for engaging in the chat. All right, Karen. All right. So today, um, that is me in the corner, obviously, um, with my um, SLR camera. That's what I normally use when I do my client work. Um, I do use my smartphone for when I'm out with the family or um, I forgot my phone or I don't want to lug around that big giant thing uh, <laughs> and using um, just, you know, my own smartphone. I've got like one of these big iPhones. I have a, um, a Google Pixel um, 4 XL. It's um, quite big. Jen thinks it's a calculator um, because it's so big and I'm actually quite petite. Um, but it helps me um, in my mobile, if I'm doing anything mobile like editing um, or in editing and, you know, the kids happen to be on their, their devices, I'm on it as well and I don't have to go on my computer. Anyways, so today's going to be smartphone photography um, in partnership with Border Crossings and funded by um, the Ontario Trillium Foundation, or Ontario Arts Council in the city of Mississauga. Um, it's a great opportunity for me to meet all of you, see all of you, and um, get out some, share some of my knowledge. So today's agenda is going to be, um, and hopefully fit all of it in the next uh, 55 minutes, <laughs> um, are the sort of the small fundamentals, um, the comp uh, composition, the lighting, um, flat lace um, items, um, so smartphone, accessories that I um, can suggest or in general uh, and some tips and tricks for you um, and then I can answer some any questions that you might have um, and we might be pushing it on the questions but you can again always message us. Okay so what smart I call a smart phonography um, if, if you want to um, use that word or smartphone photography. Um, what is it? It's the art of taking um, pictures with your, your, your cell phone. Um, a lot of people have cell phones. They always have it with them. I mean, this is, this is not only, uh, you know, I use it for my camera work, but like with the family, but my life's on it. My calendar's on it for work, for personal, for family, for, um, you know, just little apps that I have. Um, it's, it's my day planner too. So, um, yeah. Having a smartphone and having a good camera almost eliminates the point and shoot cameras. I and mean, I didn't bring I didn't bring that one out, but I still have a point and shoot um, that I have for underwater when I'm with the family. Um, it's just a little thing like this, but I can put this in the water. I mean, some iPhones and some um, smartphones do have a water resistant um, feature where you can submerge your phone underwater for a certain number of seconds, I think, before um, it, it shuts down. Um, Jen, do you have a, yours is, your iPhone is water resistant, correct? No, not that no? I know of. So I, I was about to say, like, make sure that your phone is water resistant. I don't think so. Mine's yeah, there is a, a, I forgot what the term is, but there is a certain rate for, uh, rating for water resistance. Now I would not, even if I had water resistant in the features of this phone, 
I would be so afraid to stick this underwater. <laughs> um, I mean, maybe if it's an old phone, maybe, but I, I, couldn't, I don't know. I couldn't I, I, do it. <laughs> I know that if, like, let's say you wanted to take a photo, you know, some individuals that like to show their cute bubble bath or whichever. Yeah. Don't take my suggestion, please. Like, I don't want your phones to break because of me, <laughs> yeah. but I would put it in like a Ziploc, but yes. I would submerge. Yes. So I would just Absolutely. make sure that it's just like a little bit hovering over, but I wouldn't completely submerge it. I totally agree with you. That was actually one of my tips that I don't have it on the Sorry. side, but that's one of my tips. And I wouldn't use, I would use a freezer bag versus a sandwich bag. Because a freezer bag is actually thicker. Um, you might get that little hazy plastic look, but that, that, I mean, that's part of it. Um, so yeah, it's, um, you have it in your pocket, you have it in your purse, you have it in your chest pocket normally. So you, you want to be able to take your camera out or your phone out and do a spontaneous photo. Um, even if you're a professional photographer, um, it, you know, you may not want to bring your camera everywhere you go. And there are some photographers who bring their camera everywhere they go. They keep it in their trunk. Um, but, you know, if you're running around, um, you know, the neighborhood, you're not necessarily lugging around your camera and your kids are at the playground. You have this on you. So you can actually just take a spontaneous photo. It's great. So some fundamentals for um, cameras and it being a professional camera or even um, any camera that's in here. So, you know, your camera here. Um, there are three, um, what we call a triangle um, and it's aperture, shutter speed and ISO, okay? So all of these put together makes a great photo or can contribute to making a great photo. Now they are they are the triangle. So having all of them and then in the middle has the great photo. Now I I agree and I disagree because it's not just these three things that makes a great photo. And you'll see as I go along. So um, a camera is it's all about lighting and it's the most important part of photography so um photography a camera records the light that's coming into the camera and the bouncing the the light bouncing off say a subject like me right now i have i actually have a, a light um that's shining on me um and that light is going into this camera here to bring you my image. And there's Jen's little kid, little uh, light there too. I like your handheld, it's, it's nice and uh, small. Um, okay, so aperture basically controls the area of light that enters your camera. So your, your if you have, um, I can bring out my big camera here for you and I'll show you what I mean. And, and if you are looking for, portable devices like this for light, you can actually find them on Amazon. Mm -hmm, yeah. And this one is just, it's called a po pocket light and it's an LED battery mm -hmm. operated light. It's great for your meetings or yeah, if you're trying to take yeah, photos. Absolutely. So I don't know if you can see if you can see this, but right in the center, there's like a green dot there. So inside your phone camera, you can't really see it. Um, there's an opening and a almost like doors, round doors that brings in light. And that's your, that would be part of your aperture, right? So it controls the larger the area, the more light is going to come in, obviously. Um, the narrower the light, obviously, like you can see from my hand, you can barely see me, I'm kind of dark. But if I open up the, um, open up my hands, then more of this light that I showed you is coming in and more of me is what you can see. And it also controls your depth of field. Um, if you have less light, then you're not gonna see um, maybe the, the background here. Um, your shutter speed is controlling how long that shutter is open. So your shutter 
um, is this mechanism here inside your camera and your shutter speed will go or it will go really slow and then open again. So it controls the length of time your shutter is open and allowing the light exposure to that camera sensor that's within your um, within your camera lens or your sorry your actual camera to, to record the light in that camera. A slow shutter speed allows more light, creating that blur effect. So if you're if you're taking pictures of sports, for instance, and your sh your shutter speed is is a slow shutter speed, you're going to get that trail effect. If you have high shutter speed, then you might freeze that person who's running across your, your view. Um, if a, you have kids, for instance, you will find that as they're babies, they don't move as much. So you can have a slow, slow shutter speed um, because you can get that, that almost like portrait. As they get older and they're moving faster, you'll notice some of your pictures, you might have hand blurs or they're, they're shaking their head and you have a blur of like hair trail um, in, in the camera. So that is where you would up your, your shutter speed in order to freeze the motion. Your ISO, ISO stands for International Organization of Standardization. That's a big giant phrase that Nobody you really uses, they just use ISO. <laughs> it controls the sensitivity of your camera sensor to that given light. So your um, more sensitivity, um, so if you have a ISO of like 200, which is more portrait, that is the sensitivity to, um, to the light. Um, as you get higher into needing more light, um, for instance, like a 3200, then you might be able to allow more light in. So the combination of all three of these provides you with the amount of light, what you're gonna capture um, in that moment of time. So for ISO, for instance, the more sense, the higher your ISO for say sports, meaning 3200, 6400, um, it's more sensitive to light. Um, the unfortunate part is with that, you could get a grainy picture. So then you would have to adjust the shutter and the aperture. Um, your higher ISO also is for say indoors or at night in the evenings, for instance. If you have a lower ISO, you might have, you would have sharper images and less noise. So that less graininess, less um, film, You'll see back in you know the 80s or whatever before digital cameras, you'd have film and it would be kind of grainy, um, and that is your that you, how you see your ISO. Um, it ISO also uses its lower ISO is less light sensitivity, um, so you would use this lower ISO outdoors on a say sunny day. Um, for shutter speed, okay, I said shutter speed and aperture, okay, so we've got that. So these are things that are, you know, normally used in doing your manual S SLR type cameras, let it be film, let it be digital. Um, you can have those things in your phone if you've got a specific phone. There are phones that have what's called pro mode. Uh, where you can actually set um, each one of these three apertures, shutter speed and ISO. So on the next slide, I actually have a little um, cheat sheet, I guess you'd call it. And I just, did I mark? Oh, I marked I mark the, the, um, the slide a little bit. Um, uh, I can I just have a question before you go on? And um, it was about, if, what about taking pictures of hair color cut and blow dry for portfolio work collection? I can answer that. So it's natural light. So when you're taking um, photos like that, you want as much natural light as possible mm -hmm. during the day. 
If not, if you have a lamp, like a lamp, I'll put my video on, and Karen, you can um, help correct me if not, I'm wrong, but you take a, you know, a lamp, a lampshade off, you take the lampshade off and you kind of diffuse it with a white sheet that will give you the most natural way if you don't yeah. have one of these um led light things that that's right yeah so the yeah so natural light is your your best friend that's one of my tips um i am normally a night natural light photographer um having and i'll get to that later is natural light having the natural light you don't need all this equipment you don't need to have this you don't need to fool around with um all kinds of light stands and um, carry around things and you're not going to have all of that when you have a smartphone right you're not going to carry around your um your light kit um you know there's light kits with a big giant softbox that you see in say school pictures right like your kids have school pictures where they have these big giant light boxes with a with a light stand well you're not going to have that necessarily with your smartphone so um yeah if you want to take a picture of this um of this particular screen um to help you with um, any of your, uh, you know, shortcuts as what I discussed. So higher the higher the um, higher the ISO, the more grainy it is. The lower your ISO is, the sharper your image is. Your shutter speed, the slower it is, you'll get that trail effect or the blur. And the faster your shutter speed, um, you'll capture, you'll freeze. Um, the motion and aperture, the bigger it is, affects your depth of field. So the person in the background gets blurry. Where you're smaller, the person in the, in the background, well, I guess when you say that person might be a few steps behind them, like if you're doing a group, then they'll be less blurry. Um, I see that there are a few people waiting in the waiting room there, Jen. I'll let her control the doors. I am. Sorry, I was just um, reading the questions. If so, okay. <laughs> sorry about that. So if it, light, you need softer light, if it's something, if like the makeup looks cakey or less makeup, by adding the like, setting sprays, that would help. Mm hmm. I don't actually. Oh, there's the chat box. Okay, there's. No, I'm gonna bring up the chat box too because I can't see the chat box. Okay. Oh, definitely. Like a flash can be very harsh um, for for any close-ups, especially. So yeah, you'll want to soften that light or turn down your flash um, intensity. Um, that would definitely help. Um, or even having, um, you could use even a Kleenex. So having, so this is how harsh the light can be on me. But if I put say a Kleenex on top, I'm now softening that light. Um, so I put my Kleenex on top. So I've now softened the light on me. Now, if I take it off, now I'm, you can see that I'm a little washed out here and I have darker shadows over here. So if you take even a Kleenex, it's as simple, everybody's got Kleenex in their, in their purse or um, it, maybe in your, in your makeup kit, you might have some Kleenex. So you could use that um, to soften the light. You know what, I like that actually. I'm gonna keep that Kleenex there. <laughs> okay, so your next one, your next slide. Okay, talks about um, talks about white balance and the temperature of your actual um, um, your actual light. So this is where natural light comes into effect, and um, again, that's another setting that you can set on your pro mode of your phone or in um, on your actual your big camera if you have that big camera now. I'm focusing on smartphones. So if you've got pro mode, you have that. Um, let me just see if I have, I don't think I have the, uh, I don't have white balance on, on my phone. 
Um, I don't have pro explain. I don't have pro mode on my phone. That's one thing when I looked at phones. This was uh, pro mode was not uh, one thing that I um, needed or or wanted at the time. I've had pro mode on the phone. Um, so anyway, okay. I divert. I I'm digressing here. So um, your white balance, um, different light has different temperatures, um, and you can. Um, uh, depending on the degree of your light, it'll give off a certain temperature or a certain warmth or a certain coolness, um, and it'll affect how your image actually looks. Um, the setting of the temperature, if you have ProMode and you set it to, say, your, um, you have halogens or fluorescent, um, and you tell your camera, that you're in a fluorescent room with fluorescent lights. I don't have any fluorescent lights right now. It'll tell your camera what situation your scene is in and it'll adjust um, the way it takes a picture. Sorry about that. Um, so in the, in the left side here, if you take a picture, um, you might have some yellowness to your pictures. Um, and then if you set it so that it's say 7,000 K um, Kelvin, um, you'll have more of a, you have, you're more in a blue, blue area. So for instance, and I don't want, I don't really want to blind you. I don't know if this will work or not, but I can set the Kelvin on my light kit here. Let's see if I can do this. So you see how yellow that is that's 3200 and you'll see on my face how yellow um, my face ends up being if i turn it up to i think it goes up to 5500 it's super bright i have a cooling effect so you can see, you can't actually see how cool this is uh, but it has a cooling blue effect on, on my face. You see if I, that, I pull it away a little bit, I look a little bit more natural. And I actually would like that better. So I'm gonna move that so you can see me and I'm not completely washed out. And that, that softens the, the face. Um, if you don't have that choice um, to soften the face, or you, again, you can use um, your tissue. Okay. Referring to it will adjust this one. Thanks for answering that, John. <laughs> okay, so um, I think. I'll, I'll tell you about the um, the um, tungsten here. And I think I've mixed up the slides, so I'll have to readjust that. So if you have a tungsten, um, the white balance um, is actually indoors. It's usually orange toned, like it's in the slide here. Um, and it makes your photo, when you put the setting on, that specific little light bulb that you have on your on your phone, it'll then readjust your phone so that it it moves your camera settings to more of a blue tone. So it's it is balancing out that opposite end. Okay. If you're fluorescent, that long rectangular fluorescent bulb here. Your, um, those are usually more cool toned, I guess. Um, and moving the setting to that particular um, setting evens it out. So it warms up your picture, your photo in the end. Noon daylight um, is the sun, obviously. Um, and that is your neutral line. So you're, it means that you're not in a too hot of a 
situation or too cold of a situation, meaning you're not, it's not too orange and it's not too blue. Your cloudiness, um, your cloudy, um, oh, sorry, your flash. I'm sorry, flashing is the flash. Um, since the flash from your camera is cool, um, this setting increases the orange tones in your image. So it's moving it a little bit backwards. So the middle line is what you're aiming for to balance, balance life. <laughs> and then um, your, your cloudiness is, you know, it's kind of dreary. Um, it, you want to warm, warm up the scene um, and add some warmth to your photo. Uh, for shade, again, you're, it's really blue tone, so you're bringing it back to the middle, and it's adding some more warmth and some, not orangey, it was more orangey yellow, but more of that um, cozy feeling to it. Now, that's a lot of technical, technical um, speak, but that is what your little camera in here does um, on phone mode, for instance, okay? So um, I have a picture here of pro, uh, pro mode. Um, and what you see here are things like your ISO that you can, um, if you have the pro mode, if everybody wants to bring up their camera. So if everybody brings up their camera, oh, look, I'm double exposed there. <laughs> And some people have a down arrow here, or you have like an up arrow here, um, or you have these, these um, modes that are across here. You might see one that's pro. I'm not sure um, what everybody might have. So if you go to that, if you have pro mode, great, you can play around with it. There's, again, because it's digital, but there's, there's nothing wrong with trying to take a picture. Um, and, and playing with it. You can set, there is, um, you'll find your, your own balance that you really, really like, that you think that is an awesome picture. Again, because it's art, it's, it's your art. Um, so if you like that dark and moody look, you can take dark and moody um, pictures right out of the camera. You don't have to use a preset or you don't have to do it in an, in an editing app. Um, to make that dark and moody. You can get dark and moody right out of your camera um, by using um, your ISO. If you want that blur, you set it lower if somebody's doing sports. Um, you have your shutter speed um, and your white balance that are up here. Now, again, I'm going through basics. So in the pro mode, there are a lot of things that um, we're not going to cover today just because this is more of the basics. Um, I'll show you that this one here, the four by three on this side, if you have that, um, it doesn't have to be on pro mode, but it could be in your settings. So for me, if I swipe, if I swipe down, right on the bottom of that. You see right on the bottom here, it has a skinny square and it has a more rectangle, more um, square square. That's your ratio. So that is how skinny or how wide your picture is. So most smartphones are 16 by nine. So you'll have the skinny rectangle. Um, but if you're wanting to print the picture, you're going to end up, so if you're gonna print the picture, say um, from, you're actually going to have an actual print, you'll want to go for a four by three. Um, when you go into your, uh, whoever you're printing from, let it be Blacks or Henry's or um, Walmart or um, a white color house, um, 
the, that 16 by nine picture is gonna get cropped to a four by three. So you can start by having um, your pictures always four by three. So right now my, my camera is set for four by three. So my, cam my, my screen actually starts up here and ends way down here. So right now I've got it set by four by three. So if you'll see that, and then I change it to the 16 by nine, you'll see it's now more of a full, full screen. It's more, um, it's skinnier and it's longer. So it's great if you want to, uh, like you want to have your pictures on your um, phone or you want to send it to, so if I wanted to send a picture to Jen, it will fit, likely fit on her phone. Um, if you want to do things like Instagram, then a four by three will work too, or a 16 by nine will work too, because in Instagram, because of Instagram is square, um, it's going to crop your picture anyways because of the rectangular. Same with, uh, so if you wanted to do like a YouTube video, and I'm going beyond camera, uh, still camera, still work, but uh, for YouTube, I believe it's a four by three on uh, a horizontal as well. Okay, so that is pro mode. Um, does anybody have any questions here? Yes, absolutely, Jen. You have to Google your phone's capacities. Now I had an LG camera and you'll see from the very bottom picture of this, um, this screen um, right here, that's a panoramic um, picture. So on the pro mode, you might have a pan panoramic option or um, in my phone here under modes, I have a panoramic option as well up top. What phone do you have again on the slide? Someone's asking. Oh, um, this phone here is a Google 4XL. On the slide, that is um, something I just Googled um, because there are so many types of different phones out there that have pro mode. So um, I had an LG camera, an LG, um, I think it was a 4G, and I took that bottom picture with a panoramic, okay? I'm just gonna answer a couple of more questions. I have been answering it in the chat. I just so happen to know cameras a little bit as well and video, but for your phones outside of iPhone, iPhone is pretty much automatic. So I'm assuming that some of these questions are more based on the Androids. So get, just check your capacity. So portrait for iPhone is pro. Um, and there's going to be different types of diffusion filters that you can use there. Oh, I'll talk about that yeah, later, Jen. <laughs> so when it comes to differences, everyone, I think just look at the basics and then after mm -hmm. you can Google to see what your phone can do. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And I mean, if, if later in, you know, later you have some questions, I can um, try to help you. You message me um, later after this call um, or sometime, you know, and uh well, we can talk about it. So panoramic mode is kind of cool where it, you see that, um, you see the two arrows for panoramic. And what it does is you take a picture with your um, button here, and then I'll take it as still. And then what you do is it freezes that picture and then you move the camera over and it'll stitch it together. So the picture that you see on the screen from Las Vegas, uh, when I used my LG uh, 4, um, it actually, I think this is three pictures put together and it matches. so what you do is you match it. So you might be off center. So what you would do is on that frozen picture, you would move your phone down in order to match up the buildings and it'll do its best to, to put the puzzle pieces together almost and you would get this, this photo. Um, I happen to be up above in a tower 
I think it was called the stratosphere. Um, and I was able to grab this photo. Um, you now with this photo too, I was propped on a, on a ledge. So I was able to be very still um, with, night, with night lights and neon lights. Um, you, have, um, you can have the trailing lights if you're shaking just the tad. Um, it, and, uh, it helps with your stillness um, and the blurriness that you might get when it comes to night light or night, um, night pictures. You might actually have night sight or a night mode on your phone. I think iPhones have called what night mode um, for iPhone 7 and up. Um, for Google phones, it's called night sight. Um, and when you do night sight, it, um, it'll lighten up your ISO, your aperture and your shutter speed is automatically set inside the software of your camera and you hold very still and I'll take that picture for you. And it turns out pretty good. We've done it with Christmas trees and um, in the evening, it's, it's, it's quite nice. So um, just to add panoramic, although beautiful and it prints out really, really beautiful. Um, it's hard to post on a say a Facebook page because it ends up being very long and you'll have black lines on top and black lines on bottom or white, what have you. Um, so, it, I mean, it looks, it looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. Um, it could be called night portrait. Does everyone want to see if they have it on their camera? Mm. So I have I move along here, I have what's called night sight. And when I take the picture, it actually, it won't do it now because it's so bright, but it'll tell you on the screen, hold very still. Like this is for, for my phone specifically. It'll say, hold still. And then there's a, almost a, um, a timer on it that goes around and around and around and around and it's processing to capture that light to make that image. And then once it's done, then the, the counter goes away or the timer, the hourglass goes away and then you have your picture. So I encourage you um, later tonight, try your night sight. Go outside on the, you know, go outside in the uh, front porch or your backyard or when you're going out for a walk with your dog, try it. Okay, so this is another uh, different type of camera that, um, that you see on the left side. Um, you have a cogwheel um, here that has your settings. Now for me, it's just the swipe down for here. That one. So swipe down and then I have a little cog wheel here. And that will tell me I can have all of these little options such as you want your to save the location, uh, do you want the camera sounds to come on? Um, for me, because it's Google, Google Lens suggestions, um, where you can take a picture and it tells you, um, it, it might translate text. So if you're in a foreign country and you don't understand what the word is, um, it's German, for instance, it'll translate the text for you using Google Translate. Um, you can scan barcodes um, and um, QR codes. You can do uh, social sharing, have it automatic. Um, hand gestures, I don't know if anybody might have hand gestures on your phone. So when you're taking a picture, you can either use your hand to swipe over and it's like touching the button to take the picture. Um, there is, um, you could also do, this one has a double tap action. So when you're in camera mode, 
All you have to do is tap on the full screen. You don't have to tap on the dot to take the picture. Um, there's also um, on the LG when we had it, when I had it, you could use voice um, shutter. So you could do a say a selfie and you could say cheese and then I'll just take a picture. I didn't even have to touch it to touch the button. So those features are really handy, especially if you're taking a picture from far away, um, like maybe you're doing a family portrait um, and you don't, uh, maybe the timer is too, not enough time or too much time and you just wanna go, everybody say cheese and then it takes the picture for you instead of like, is it taking it? Is it taking it? And then everybody has a fake smile, which is, um, which are always really fun pictures. Um, there are, for this one here, you can turn on frequent faces um, as well. So if you have certain faces that you normally take a picture of, it'll categorize your, your pictures. So if it's, it's, say, me doing selfies all the time, it'll recognize me and I'll categorize me into like a Karen folder or, or, or tag it for Karen. Um, and then we, it's easier to find in Google Photos. I am not associated or affiliated with Google. So please don't <laughs> take that as me advertising for a Google. Um, I, as I'm talking, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm trying to sell Google. Um, it just happens to be the phone I have right now. Um, it could, I could be saying the same thing for iPhone or, or a Samsung phone. Um, I'm not, um, I'm not a, an affiliate or a, um, a hired by Google to advertise for them. So please take that, <laughs> take that into account. <laughs> um, so the squiggly line I showed you before uh, um, in the previous slides, that's your flash. And um, 90% of the time, keep the X on the flash um, because what happens when you flash in your face, you could end up with washed out photos like this. The 90% of the time you won't need your flash. Um, as long as you can find good light, you won't need your flash. Um, there are certain times you might use the flash and that's okay. Um, but they're all, there are alternatives to, to having a flash. You have a self timer as well um, that you can use if you're having to set your phone up and you're taking, say, a family picture or a quick family picture, um, then you can set the phone. You don't even have to hold the phone. Um, and then you can just walk away, don't touch it, and it'll take the picture for you. Um, for the cameras that I've had and I've checked, if there's a three second and there's a 10 second option, um, the, the one phone that I had actually had like a photo boost timer where it would take um, three pictures within three seconds of each other. So that's a really cool option where you could do a face like this, like this, and like this, right? So, and it would capture in that moment. And though that one's really fun for kids or if you're at when social distancing ends, if it ends, um, then that's really fun for your, you know, your social gatherings. Um, you have your um, other effects. You might have a wand in the corner. Um, those are different types of effects that you can have. Um, you have your ratio that could be right. I showed you mine in my settings, um, but that could be right on your screen. Your bottom, so when you're, so for Zoom, there are certain Zooms, like for this one here, I have a one times then a two times. I can actually tap the two times and it'll Zoom for me. And I'll go back one and it'll, it'll um, um, come back. The other way to do your Zoom is to um, put your two fingers together and move outwards. And now you're looking at my hair. If you want to zoom back in, your fingers are apart and you bring it together. It's hard, very hard to do opposite, I have to tell you. Um, I love zoom. Be careful of when you zoom because when you zoom too far, 
your picture starts to degrade a little bit and you'll end up with that greenness. Um, so if you can, step as close as you can physically and then use a zoom if you need to. If, you, if there's something obstructing your way, then you might have to use your zoom. But if you can physically move towards that picture and that goes with regular point and shoot cameras, big SLR cameras or camera phones, um, moving closer together will provide you with a sharper image. Um, so there, the, oh, I showed shooting modes too, um, where you have uh, night sight, portrait mode. So for, for me, a portrait mode basically gives me, oh, I took a picture, didn't I? <laughs> um, basically gives you um, a focus on a face. So I, if I tap here, it'll focus on my nose. And it blurs out to the background as well because it's controlling the depth of field for the camera. And it's focusing only on my face. Now I don't have anything in my background. I don't have any, uh, this is a newly painted room. So we don't actually have any pictures on the walls, but the pictures that would hang on the wall would be more blurred out. It would be a little um, fuzzy. Okay, so you have your video mode, which we're not going to go through now. And then for this one, I have panoramic. Um, I have photosphere, which is kind of cool. Uh, photosphere for this camera, it's like panoramic, but you can, it's not moving your camera from left to right. It's moving um it's taking a picture from here to here to here to here to here and wherever you want and it creates almost a you could create a 360 um image if you wanted to um that one i i haven't played with a lot um but it's it, it's a neat one um and playground to be honest i have not um i've not played with so um, if anybody has a Google phone and wants to learn with me, I definitely would encourage that. Um, we can have like a, I guess, a little mastermind for, for Google phones, but again, not advertising for them. <laughs> okay, so um, in your phone, so you have those types of settings. So with mine, I had the portrait. So portrait is an automatic setting. It's pre-adjusted for you. Uh, with very minor things like fo focusing on a face. Um, you might have a face recognition option um, where it will actually pick out a face and it'll give you either a circle around the face or a square around the face. And that's um, super helpful when it comes to taking pictures of um, your family or your spouse or what have you. So it's not focusing on say somebody in the background you don't really want a picture of. So if you're on the, if you're doing street photography or if you're doing, you're a tourist um, and you wanna take a picture of your partner, um, it's not taking a picture of the person who might be sitting behind your partner. It's taking a picture of over here. So you can actually um, tap on it, tap on the face and it'll recognize It'll, it'll focus in on that face and say, these are all the faces, who do you wanna focus on? Um, and then you tap that person, that's just your partner that you want to focus on. Um, your, your landscape um, will also do um, certain settings based on your, um, your situation with being really cloudy, mountainous, um, grass in the forefront, um, your sports and action, those would up your shutter speed, for instance, so that you could freeze motion. Um, your macro and close up. So if you're taking a picture, say of, um, I have a muffin here, um, and you set it to macro, you can go close up and it'll focus, say, on the blueberries or cranberries. I don't know which kind of muffin this is. Um, but you could capture the details of the crumbs that are on this muffin too. Um, that would be, and, and that, that's part of doing um, possibly flat legs if once we get to that and I have 
not much time left, sorry there. <laughs> okay, so, and then your night site, which I already talked about. Uh, we went through the settings. Do you guys see the green mark on the slide for, for anybody? Yeah, I, I do. It's you do? Okay, I must have marked up the, um, marked the screen somehow in the slide. Um, it's not actually on the slide. So if, um, when I do my copy of it, you won't see that. Anyway, okay, so for, for this camera here, so this is actually my settings here on this particular phone. And the one thing that, the couple of things here is there's HDR. You might have HDR on yours. Um, I would suggest turning that off for everyday photos. HDR is a mode that tells you, tells the camera to take multiple pictures and each of those pictures are, have an automatic exposure. And what it does is it takes those multiple um, pictures at that um, exposure, and then it lays them on top of each other to make the ideal image. So this is, this is really a good um, setting when you're doing landscape photography. Um, you're out in you know, Grand Canyon, for instance, and you have the sky, and then you have the rocks, and then you have, say, you know, the ravine, for instance. Those could those may need different exposures. If you went automatic, you might be overexposed on your sky and underexposed on um, the ravine. So this HDR uses different exposures for different uh, the different images, and then plops them, lays them on top of each other, so it creates one ideal or one what they call perfect photo. Um, it's a great uh, feature for playing around if you want that different um, an edgy look when you cut when it comes to um, portraits as well. Um, it's a fun that's a fun one that makes some of your pictures look unique. And from picture to picture for your HDR, it actually might look different um, just because of you know you're moving you're moving one way versus another and the light's just slightly different. So your those different images at different exposures will will be different. So when they overlay, you'll have different looking pictures. Um, so if you are looking at um, um, you might want to, you know, focus in on, on certain things. You may lose some details of other things. So that's where HDR um, uh, yeah, helps a lot. Um, you might have a raw versus JPEG mode. So JPEG is a standard file format for pictures, especially when you're printing pictures. Um, the file sizes are say this big, whereas a raw picture, and it, so it's a pressed image, whereas a raw image is, say, this big, and are, they can be really, really big, and they're not compressed. And that helps with if you want to do any editing, um, if, because it's not compressed, um, and you can get down to the nitty gritty details of, um, of doing your edits. So maybe it's taking something out of a picture. Uh, a raw image is, is perfect for that. Um, JPEG is something that you want to use for printing and for your everyday pictures. Um, most camera phones have um, so much space, um, depending on what you've purchased. So they have, um, uh, it, it builds up space if you do raw. It's, uh, and then you'll have to delete or you have to purchase some cloud space. So cloud space, if you have an iPhone, you might be purchasing iCloud to back up your photos. And I suggest back up your photos always, um, may, maybe for an organizational point of view, once a month um, it, to your either your computer hard drive, um, your iCloud, if it's not automatically backed up, um, you can do that. Um, Google Images or Google Photos has a backup system. If you have a, a Gmail account um, or um, a Drive account, you can use that. Um, you can also use, if you're, this is my biggest tip, and I didn't put this in the slides, but my biggest tip, if you subscribe to Amazon Prime, 
you can you got you have Amazon photos as part of your prime package and you can back up your photos automatically to Amazon photos and it's unlimited. So. My mind is blown. That's <laughs> Okay, thank you. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, that's my that's probably my biggest takeaway from this this um, this workshop. Now I'm I'm starting to run out of time here. Um, okay, so composition is your next piece. I told you that the the, the ISO aperture and um, um, shutter speed are your triangles, and that is supposed to make the best photo. Well, I disagree. I agree, and I disagree. I I have to add that composition is also part of your making your best photo. And again, it's your art. So you will be the best judge of what your art looks like. Okay. So again, these are pictures from Las Vegas. Um, I happened to go through the whole camera roll and I, and this is again with an LG four um, and taking perspective of what your subject is and what your, your focal point is. For these two photos here, it was the boat. Um, and I've taken it in different views. So I've taken this as, as part, uh, vertical, so straight up. And this bottom one I've taken this way. And there's no zoom. It's just the fact that I've moved my camera this way or this way and you know, taken it like this. Okay, so you can tell from the landscape one that it's actually, it doesn't look like it's part of a hotel. In the landscape one, you can see the sign here. That's Treasure Island, fun, fun place, by the way. Um, and then you have things like just looking at what is in, how your elements are arranged. Like this one, you can't really arrange it, but you can walk around to take things out of your view, like, like the treasure island sign that i did in the vertical um i just i just stepped to the side and it disappeared um where you place your subject so where do you want your partner to to stand when you take that picture do you want the guitar in the background or do you want um, the trees in the background for instance you would have that person move um, and how do you want to highlight them do you want to highlight them as being um, normal size or say big size. So you would maybe lower your camera so that they look like a giant or do you wanna look on top? Um, looking on top is really great for watching um, smaller kids play um, that tells the story. So how do you wanna tell the story of your image? Um, and look about what's in the background as well. Um, for, for me, my son plays baseball, right in the backstop when they're batting. Normally there's this big giant garbage can that has all kinds of cups in it. Well, it doesn't make for a good photo or it does make a good photo and you have lots of editing to do. Um, so you have your, you know, your focal point, I said, um, where you choose your subject um, and what your, what's your visual story. Um, the other uh, piece is your rules of thirds. This is a strong way to express your, um, your picture. Um, break, this is where you break up your um, image into thirds. So for me, you'll see here on your phone, there's some lines here. That's your rule of thirds. And you have a setting on your phone that's called either the golden rule or rule of thirds. And what you do is you break up your image, you're breaking up the image. So, and you place your, your subject in one part or the right part or up or down, depending on um, how you want to um, put your image. So the idea is you would put your image so that the cross section of your lines, so where it crosses that little plus is where you would put your image. So for instance, uh, that would be a decent looking photo if I were to smile and have makeup on. <laughs> so you see in, the, in the, this Las Vegas, the, the Ferris wheel, I've put that picture um, in the, I pushed it over versus centering it like the first picture. The first picture, I just put it right in the center because I wanted to see that specific subject. 
Okay. Any questions about rule of thirds? I find you tend to center the main phototopic rather than rule of thirds. Now, Steve, absolutely, you can do both. Um, and, and later, because it's digital, you can do both. Put it in the center, um, move your camera up, move your camera down, um, slide it to the left, slide it to the right. I always have my rule of thirds on. So on your camera, on your phone, you can put that grid mode on. Um, where is my grid mode? Um, grid mode, okay. So my composition, I have a composition right here and I have a grid mode here. So I can turn it off or on. So um, I have no grid, I have a three by three, I have a four by four, and I have what's called a golden ratio too. So play around with that. Um, definitely encourage, it doesn't mark the actual picture uh, with the grid lines when you take a picture. It's just a guideline for you. So yeah, you put your focal point in the crosshairs of your, your your um your grid line and i think i have even in the camera roll i think i have um the ferris wheel i have it on the right and i have it on the left and you'll see some more pictures of it because that seemed to when i was on that trip that was just i it was amazing to be that close i mean I've, i haven't been to london um london england but i'd love to be able to see that that ferris wheel and las vegas was the closest i could get it's called the link um so yeah okay so framing um is where you would lead where do you want to lead your viewer's eye to or from so for instance this top picture here, it's beautiful, but you don't know what it is. The bottom picture here is actually what it is. It's the ceiling of a hotel lobby with lots of people in it. So having just the ceiling in it doesn't tell the picture, or sorry, doesn't tell the story of what it is, where I am, or what you want me to look at. Um, but if you go down here and then look in this picture, you're like, wow, that's a hotel lobby? And look how big it is. It's huge based on how big, how, how little, I should say, are, are the people in it. Your next one is leading lines. So you'll see here again, rule of thirds, Steve, it does, you don't have to use rule of thirds. It's not a be all and end all. Um, but you have your leading line. So where you have these linear lines and you can play with this um, and you see how I played with it too in these three photos. These are all pictures with within the same, same, you know, I'm standing right underneath it. And I love the lines of where it's leading to. It's all leading to the center of um, the center of the Ferris wheel where, you know, everything turns around with it. Um, and usually your, your line starts from an edge and goes towards where you want that person to look and to almost stop looking. Um, look at your negative space. So the sky, the sky here also too is, is saying that you're looking upwards, right? Um, your perspective, um, by changing how close you are to um, to that subject, right? Versus like me doing this and me doing this gives you a totally different perspective of me as a subject. So same thing with your art and your, um, if you're doing landscape photography or your kids, for instance, right? Shooting them, shooting your family from just straight on versus looking above um, gives gives the viewer either a different story or a different perspective. Um, looking down at your kids is is almost showing it in in first person, like you're seeing it through my eyes and my camera. Versus when you're downwards, you're in amongst 
the the situation or or in the within the story or having your feet in it means that you're playing a puzzle with your kids that type of thing and then with the angles that i mean that that's angles right you have your bird's eye view so you're looking straight on top and then you're looking a worm's eye view which i call and you're looking from um bottom up you now because i I have night pictures of me in the Ferris wheel um, at night. I, I don't think they turned out very well, but that would be bird's eye view. Um, that panoramic photo, that was bird's eye view of Las Vegas. Your lighting. So um, does everybody have time? It is 10 after. Um, I don't know if uh, Jen, um, I am over time, um, but I have a few more slides left. It's a good conversation. Yeah, no, is we're it, fine. Um, okay. We, yeah, go for it. Exactly. Okay. All right, no all stuff right. to drop off, drop off. If not, this is on YouTube. So go ahead. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I mean, it, um, if you have to drop off, I've enjoyed talking to you. I did go over time on some of the basics, but uh, um, message me if you have any other questions um, and, and take care. I love the fact that you joined us. Um, for those who are staying, um, I'm moving on to lighting now. So, like I said earlier, lighting is your most important um, element in photography. Um, you know, you can take a, advantage of some of the bad lighting and you can absolutely um, um, and you can have horrible pictures. Um, there are editing software out there that can help you lighten photos um, if you need to. Um, so there's different types of lights that you can take advantage of or, or use. So a listed here are three basic categories that I've put everything in. One is your natural light. So just your direct sunlight. Um, that is the, that is the mo absolute most natural light you can have. Um, my suggestion here um, for direct light is that if you're taking a group photo, make sure that everybody is evenly lit. So don't have some people hidden by a tree so that their face is, is not, um, it is sort of darker. And then don't have somebody that is directly in like in the light like this. So having a person like this, and then at the end having a person like this. So you have that uneven lighting um, so that's, um, it can be, um, depending on where the, the sun is, you could have more harsh light on everybody's faces, um, or depending if it's on the side, you could light up this side of the face um, and have nice shadows on this side of the face. So again, it's your art. So how you want to portray that picture is up to you. Um, you can have, um, I'll say that high noon is probably the most harsh, um, but if you find a tree or a bush that the per, that people can stand um, in front of, um, there's there's all uh, you know that is your best friend. I, I would have to say. So open shade um, or an overcast. You're um, exploring, say your friends. Oh, just hang on. We might have a visitor. Hello. What did they do? Yeah. Hi, everybody. You have a muffin. Yeah, I didn't know if you can hear my daughter. She's... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Huh? Okay. Sorry, everybody. Just hang on one second. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Okay. And again, guys, just a tip, you can screen grab the slides. As well. Yes, absolutely. And I'll, I'll create a PDF so that I can um, send it out to you, everybody. Okay. So you have your open shade as well. Um, this here, um, if you're out exploring with your friends or your family, um, even the dog, you might want to decide to take that group photo. And the sun is just too bright. Um, you don't want people doing this in front of the sun. Um, and you have some weird shadows under your eyes as well. Um, 
to add to some bags under the eyes if you're not sleeping. Um, and you can have a shadow of your, your phone um, if the sunlight is too much on you. Um, I don't think I can create the, the shadow, um, but you might have those, those shadows there. So find, try and find a shady spot to take the picture. Again, to have everybody evenly um, lit um, on the face under a tree. Um, if the, you found a nice building, for instance, go around the corner um, so the sun is not so bright and facing on you. Um, your moonlight is also a really cool um, free light that you can use, especially when it's, um, um, when it's full. And then you use your night, your, you can use your night sight in that as well. So use that to your advantage. And then you're not restricted of having two pictures that are too dark, but it's a good situation or a good, you're like, oh, you look really good or you're, um, you know, you, I, I love this spot. Maybe it's a spot you don't really visit a lot, but it's a great spot and it's, it's a nice sight. Use the moonlight to your advantage. Um, another natural light um, situation is your window light. Window light is your absolute um, best friend when you're inside. Um, the picture of, um, of Tasha here, she has a, a window that is about four feet from her right side. And that's all window light. There is no flash. There's no um, light source on her um, except for that window light with, with you know, a caveat that she has a, um, a sheer, a white sheer curtain that's on top of that. Golden hour. Golden hour is something you might want to play with. Everybody loves a nice sunset and everybody who wakes up early enough um, Jen included, um, can take advantage of sunrise golden hour pictures. Um, this would be about, a, about one hour, two hours before sunrise, or sorry, um, after sunrise and before sunset. Um, this is what's called a magical time in, um, in the photography landscape or you know in the art world where it gives you that natural light that is soft and warm and it lets off that like golden light like they um it's almost dreamy i guess you could call it um and in the if you do it in the summer that time is sort of the cooler times of um the day where the sun is low you're not you don't have that harsh light um and you're not sweating and take that picture where that person might feel uncomfortable because they're too hot. Okay, your artificial lights. So we talked about some of the lights um, in the chat there with some of the lights, your lamps. Um, I won't take my desk lamp off, but you have your, you have flashlights. Um, you have um, on my phone here, um, I have my flashlight that you could use as well as an artificial light. Um, now, when you're on my phone here, I can't actually take a picture with the flashlight on. It turns it off automatically. So my suggestion, my tip for this one is use your partner's phone. So you have, um, if you don't want to use your flash, um, you would place your partner's phone on uh, with the flash on and put it right about here and then focus in on whatever you needed to do so it's consistent lighting instead of flash lighting you can use car headlights to your advantage um, street lights so any street lights or city lights um, if you're walking along um, young street and there's a, a, a store that has some lights coming out of it, you can use that as your, um, as your light. Again, it's free. You're not paying for their hydro. <laughs> you can use candlelight or fire. Um, like I said, the phone light you can use. Um, you can use strobes, um, which is more photography equipment. Um, you could use um, the, 
So some car mechanics and construction sites might have these big square lights. You could use those. They're really strong, so I would put them far away so that you're not having a harsh light like this, but pull it away so that you have a softer light. Um, you would have your camera flashes. Again, you can use the flash on your camera. Um, that's that zigzag um, um, symbol. Um, on your phone, there is an, if you see a zigzag by itself, that means the flash will always go. Whenever you touch the button to take a picture, it'll always flash. If you do the, um, the, the zigzag with an A, that is automatic. So it will sense whether or not it needs a flash to go off. And if there's um, an X across the flash, it means that it will not flash at all. Um, you can use fireworks um, if you're, you know, if you happen to be um, down at, oh, I don't know if they're going to run fireworks this year, um, but if you're down, say, in the harbor um, or Ontario place, you could take a picture of the family while fireworks are going off. Um, that would be a great, you know, lit photo um, and a good story to say that you've gone out to um, watch the fireworks. Um, the other one is your computer screen right now. So without, I don't know if, let me see. So right now I have my computer, I have another computer monitor behind this screen here and it's a white screen. Um, that's lighting up my face. Um, it's not too harsh. It's not too bright. Um, but it's, uh, when I initially started this zoom with Jen, that's what I had on. And then I pulled this one in. This is what this one looks like. It's fairly big. It doesn't, you wouldn't want to carry that around with your phone, um, but you could. Okay. Um, your backlighting. So you could have um, some backlighting. Um, you can create silhouettes. So um, you could create a shadow so your light is behind the person. Let's see if I can, my light's not big enough to, to do a complete one. Um, you could have sun flares like the one in um, over here. So I have the sun. Um, it's actually, that is actually golden hour. Um, and the sun is um, dropping. And I had these sun flares behind me. You have to be careful with sun flares. Um, you take multiple pictures and move just slightly uh, when you do pictures like that, because you, if it's, you know, you have a one that you don't get out too, too often at that time, um, take lots of pictures and then delete the ones you don't like because You'll see that on this on this slide, there is are these two red dots in front of me. Those are sunspots, and sometimes, depending on where you move, the camera will actually put the sun, might put the sunspot on your face, um, depending on where it breaks across your face. So I have lines across my face, and then you'll see a green dot on my face too. That's the another sunspot. Um, so I had a great one of my daughter. Uh, at a playground when she was really little and she was sitting on a playset, and the sun was behind her um, and it was it was just after sunrise and I thought I had this beautiful picture and I had a, a different phone and it didn't look like I had this nice sun flare behind or sun flare in front of her I get home and I check the picture and she's got this big red dot on her face you couldn't even actually see her eyes and her nose um, so take lots of pictures um, and capture those types of moments because um, it's digital and you can delete them. It's, I mean, that's a wonderful world of digital. Um, what else would there be? There are halos as well. So you could create uh, the halo. If you see my hair is kind of, my hair is kind of glowing. That could be your halo as well. Your back, your backlit as well in order to get some of the detail of hair. 
you would do that when the background is a little darker. Um, for instance, if, if the wall behind her was darker, I could put a light behind her and I could brighten up her background so I don't lose the detail of her dark hair in the wall or in that dark space. Okay, there is color backlighting uh, where you could have, um, I don't actually, if you had some, um, if anybody drinks Canada Dry, uh, some, some, uh, the, those in Ireland, a Canada Dry, a ginger ale, um, they come in green bottles. Oh, actually, you know what, I have this. Okay, so like this, uh, my water bottle is a color, is, is blue. If I put a light behind it, I can create a blue um, tinge on myself. So if you had um, color filters or um, like a mylar paper or a, a cello paper, sorry, my light just dropped on me. Um, um, a, um, you know, those uh, color films that you would wrap gift baskets in, keep those and keep a square and you could put it in front of your lens and you could create a cool effect. So I could put this in front of my camera um, and create that a cool blue effect or a, a pink effect or a green effect if it was a, a ginger ale bottle. Our ginger ale bottles um, are normally green for those who are across the, across the ocean. Um, and you can create those type of artistic um, looks. Um, the other one is using um, a reflected light. Um, so you can, I have here a reflector and it's, it's really big. Um, you don't, you not likely want to carry this around with a smartphone, but it's this big. And then when I go like this, you can see how big it is. It's huge. And there are bigger, um, but you can use this to reflect light and even out the light on each side. So here, for instance, I have the light on this side of me. If I put the reflector on this on my other side, the light can bounce off of the reflector and then onto the side of my face. So you'll end up with more even light. So you might, you're probably not going to want to buy one of these with a smartphone, but my hint is to use paper. Everybody's probably got a white piece of paper around. You could use that. So you could have a portrait and you have, and for the, for the hairstylist there, have the, the person hold a paper by their, by their face and the light will bounce off the white piece of paper onto their face. The other one I have is a white binder. Or white foam core from the dollar store. So yeah, that one. Yeah, that one's the other one too. I was going to mention. Um, and uh, you can put aluminum foil on the other side, so you have a double bounce. That's right. Yeah. So I've got. So this reflector here is white on one side and silver on the other. So those are those are some different types of um, lighting effects that you can use. Um, play with it. Um, be careful with. A uh, candlelight and fire, please, and fireworks. <laughs> I'm not legally responsible for any uh, fires there, but yeah, those those things are kind of those things are cool to play with if you have the opportunity to play with it, um, and have some fun. Have some fun with lighting and and be creative, be artistic. It's, um, there's nothing wrong with, especially with again digital photography. Uh, with film, you have to be careful of what you are taking a picture of because that was it. You run out of your 24, you might get 26 pictures out of a 24 roll, um, but yeah, with film, you had to be more careful. A digital snap, 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 and then later you can go in, look at them, go, oh no, this is awful, and then just delete them if you wanted to. So that's a great thing about digital. Um, okay, so flat lays. Flat lays, if you guys are into doing flat lays, um, 
this is something where uh, those who sell products or those who might love to take pictures of food, say the dinner, fabulous dinner you've made and you want to take a, a great picture of, um, of your dinner and post it, um, let it be on your, on your Facebook or your Instagram or what have you. Um, a flat lay is a perfect way to um, um, present what you've created. So what's a flat lay? A flat lay is usually um, shooting styled or arranged items from above. Um, that's traditionally what a flat lay is, hence the word flat. Uh, but then you get some flat lays where you are on an angle. So your flat lay um, being above are the donut pictures and the flowers. Uh, but then when I did these, the pie, I thought, you know what, I wanted an angled shot of it. So it's still a flat lay um, and it's styled. Um, I do have pictures of it above, but I felt like it deserved some depth. So flat lay, you wouldn't be able to see how deep that pie is. Now, there's a picture afterwards that um, I didn't put on here because it didn't fit. Um, but it actually shows that this pie is actually an inch and a half thick. When you're above, you can't tell that. You just know how big the actual pie on top, the diameter is, but you can't tell how thick it is. Um, so that's uh, um, a, a flat lay. Um, how to do a flat lay. So I have six little tips for six how to's on doing a flat lay. So find a space that has natural lighting. Uh, your window light is probably optimal. You could do it out on your porch, depending on what kind of light you have. Um, and trying to avoid any harsh shadows. If you're a product, um, um, you're selling a certain product, for instance, or um, uh, say you're doing, you say you sell candles, um, shoot at the same time. Um, every day. Um, um, and, and that will give you a consistent, the same lighting all the time um, so that you don't have to do so much editing. And then the light, the harshness of the light or the softness of the light is consistent amongst all your products. Um, that's, a, that's one of the tips I have for you for that. Um, number two, create a mood. Um, um, you know, your, what kind of mood do you want to set for, say, that candle? Well, a candle can be romantic. It could be um, you, you want to get the stink out of the bathroom, for instance. Um, you want it to be more high-end fashion. Do you, what kind of mood do you want? Do you, and do you want a dark and moody? Do you want a cheerful scene? Um, so you choose those and you sort of set up, you collect up your props for that. Um, what kind of color palette do you want um, is another thing. Um, my, my brand colors and my, my company colors are the dark teal and the pink um, that you see on the screen. Um, so I would use, if I was posting it on my Instagram or my website, I would incorporate some pinks and some teal and teal greens with those images. Um, uh, you know, you're, you could be a neutral person. So include some whites and, and, and some grays in there as well. Um, one thing I didn't add in here is when you're collecting up your props for this, um, you could add texture as well um, to, your, um, to your mood. If it's uh, a candle and it's, you know, you want to do it by the fire, well, you would add a blanket or a pillow, things like that. Um, choose your background. So what would you choose for your background? So if it is a candle, maybe the blanket is your background um, or it's, um, you know, it's the candle sitting by the couch. So your couch and say a blanket would be um, part of it, but you're shooting from on top or a slight 45 angle um, in order to create that, that background. Now you don't have to move your couch to the window, um, but you could mimic that with fabrics you might have as well. Um, you could use an oversized sweater. 
for instance, for an interesting background. Um, try adding plates or, um, you know, if you're a candle, you like your candles by in your kitchen. Um, maybe it's a, a place where you like to put your candle. Well, then you would clean up the space and declutter that space. And um, in order for me to tell that it's a kitchen, um, maybe add some cups and some cutlery arranged nicely um, on that counter, right? To, to, to signify this is in the kitchen. Um, so after you have all that planned out, you plan out how you want the layout to be, okay? So um, you can be totally simplistic where you just add a couple of things um, or you just add one thing. I mean, I have tulips in just tulips in this, in this photo, just tulips, that's it. Um, and I spread them out in order to get that sort of a fan look. Um, they came in a bunch, a really tight bunch and I took a picture like that and I wasn't satisfied. It, they're pretty, I wasn't satisfied with it. So I spread them out. So you can do that too. Play around with how you want um, things positioned. Um, add, some, add some items, take away some items. Um, if you are taking pictures for, um, you want the same images say for a website or you want the same type of style then what you could do is use um, double-sided tape to hold things down so they don't shift. And you would just take one thing away. So for instance, the donut picture. If I had another picture, I would just nicely take that picture away and put another picture on top. And that could be for if you're doing an Etsy site or a website, um, you could do that, but have the donuts and the coffee cup in the same exact spot. Um, so you're not moving, you're not moving that donut around. Now, for, for food, for instance, I would probably use icing as my glue or my tape. Um, you could buy, I don't know, Betty Crocker icing, for instance, to help you with that glue. And then you're not afraid of um, not eating it. <laughs> um, so uh, so some, of your, some of my tips, try basic items you already have. Um, for instance, so for backgrounds, so, because I have kids and um, we do lots of art things, I have craft paper that you can use. So this is cardstock. And I think, uh, yeah, so Jenna said you can use Bristol board or printed paper. So yeah, you can use cardstock and you can even put it together. You don't have to use just one. Um, you can use two. So you can have um, something like this as your picture or like this or like that so you play around with how you want your image to actually look and again with digital don't be afraid of trying things out right like and there's like i bought a whole cardstock um page and this is from dollarama okay this is from the dollar store you could go to Michael's um, or Hobby Lobby uh, to buy cardstock. This is just assorted. And then I use, um, depending on, you know, the client and their, and their color scheme, I might use um, one or two or three um, pages, depending on their color scheme and, and what the style is. Um, I've used scraps of wallpaper. Um, I have a, a really nice wallpaper that is, it looks glittery, but not too glittery that it, that it reflects, but scraps of wallpaper as well um, for you to use. You can use your candles. Um, I went into the fridge, uh, no, sorry, for this pie. This pie, well, it needed something. So I went to the farmer's market and I got some strawberries and I can eat them afterwards. It's, it's terrific. I, that's the food pictures are the best because you can eat them. <laughs> I love it. And so um, you can, there are many different tips. We just want to honor your time because we are over here. Oh, we are way over. I'm so sorry. Yeah. This is so, so fun. <laughs> and, and, and people are engaged. So again, we would love to see the photos that you come up with. If you go for a walk today, spring is kind of happening. So you might look see little details, but 
all of this again, we will share with you. Uh, Karen, if you have mm -hmm. a couple more slides. Yeah, I just have a couple more. more. And... Yeah. So I noticed, I was noticing that uh, Jen was putting some links in there um, for, for some products. There are products that you can get for your, your smartphone. Um, you don't have to get any of these, but these are some of the ones that they have out there. They have the ring light. So it's like, it's like this, but smaller, and it can clip on to your clip on to the top of your um, your phone, and then it's just a constant light, like this one, just round and um, evens out the shape of a face. Mind you, my face looks oval, but um, it rounds out the lighting around your face. Um, there are camera lenses out there that you can um, clip onto the the um to your camera here so there's um a fisheye there's a zoom lens there's a wide angle lens that you can purchase um there are uh, the one on the left here is a self timer like a, a click timer so it's bluetooth um that's attached to a camera um a camera phone holder so this is a camera phone holder that i can put on my tripod and it's expandable so when you do look um, at places for your your for something like this, and it has a tripod um, screw mount, just make sure it fits your phone. Um, if I put my this phone in my Otter box, this does not fit. Um, so you would just put it on, and it fits nicely on here. So I would screw this onto your tripod first, then put your phone on. This one's great here because I can fold the top down and the bottom down and I can throw it in my bag. Okay, um, you, there are flashes that you can actually buy for your phone. Um, I've not tested this, so I, I don't know what it's like. I, I was researching um, smartphone accessories, but this here is an actual flash that you can um, adjust to your phone. Um, you can also buy a little cell phone, uh, smartphone printer um, that you can Bluetooth to your, or Wi-Fi to the printer from your phone. And you can print, I think this one prints out like two by threes. So those are really fun. And you can buy different papers that you can either put it to a magnet or it's a sticker, or you can just do a regular photo um, that you could say, and I think the commercials have it the daughter, the granddaughter gives it to their grandparents. So that's, that's fun. Um, I skipped over tips and tricks. Oh, some tips and tricks. Okay, so this one just really quickly, I said natural light can be your best friend, no money needs to be spent. Uh, you won't need your flash 90% of the time. So turn it off in your settings. Um, prop up your phone against a wall or a stack of books when you um, don't have a tripod and you want to use your your timer on your phone. Um, it's a phone's not going to stand up on its own. So lean it against something, but don't lean it against too on too much of an angle or you'll end up um, taking a picture up people's noses. Um, nobody wants to see that. <laughs> um, uh, take multiple shots in burst mode. Burst mode is another um, uh, feature you might have on your phone where you hold down the button and it takes multiple pictures like this. Um, and then you can go through the camera roll later and delete out the ones you don't want or that didn't work out. You pick it your, your, your favorite, your best photo and you just keep that one. And I said, avoid trying to zoom too much because when you get too close, then it gets really grainy and it gets distorted. Um, clean off your camera lenses. If you wear glasses um, or you have, um, so if you wear glasses, you all know what the microfiber um, cloth looks like. Um, just clean off this part and then clean off the selfie, the selfie one, do it often. If you have a cotton shirt, um, you can wipe that down, um, wipe this part down and this part down um, do that often so you don't get have fingerprints or smudges across your pictures um, because that the the grease or the fingerprints will distort the amount of light that comes in. Turn off your filters. 
So Jen mentioned that there are filters on the iPhone that you can, um, that you can use. Um, I suggest keeping them off. Um, take that picture because if you have the filter on um, and it's a beautiful photo, but there's some sort of, uh, there's uh, rabbit ears and a nose and, you know, something bouncing in the background, for instance, that that could have been a photo you could have had for, you know, a, a family portrait. So I would apply the filters on after you take the photo. Um, and that way you have that great photo um, without a filter. So you could have the one with, the, with, sorry, one without the filter and then you can go in afterwards and put the filter on so that you have two photos versus having the filter on and that's the only photo and you can't get back the what the original looks like. Um, learn to unlock your camera quickly. So if you have a lock system, whether it's a pin system, if it's a thumbprint system, um, learn to do that so that you can access your camera, your, um, your camera easily. Um, you can, if you can move around your icons for your, um, for your camera, to, uh, on here you hold it down and then you drag it to whatever screen you want. I have it on my front screen so that I can access it easily. Um, some phones have the ability to um, um, set the camera access on your phone directly. So if I, so for mine, I have this orange button here. I set the setting so that if I um, press double, press it like press it twice um, very quickly, my camera turns on. So that's all I did was I turned it, have it off, and then I turned it on. So those are some shortcuts that you can use um, for, for that. Um, and if you're doing it, photo editing apps, um, there are tons of apps that there's, there's tons of free apps out there that that's another workshop in its own. And I don't know why I'm writing all over the slides. I apologize. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, don't overwrite your original photo. Um, because if you overwrite it, you won't get it back and those edits will be stuck there. Um, so if you're cropping or if you're um, changing colors of things um, or if you're, you're resizing it for Instagram versus Facebook, um, save as or save a copy uh, of it and then do it so that you have your original. Um, it just, it allows you to have that and, and, and if you're satisfied with it later, then you can delete the original. But um, once you're once you save over top of it, you may not get it back. So that that's those are my tips. Um, and here is just some some shadow work here, another flat lay that I took. So I took those tulips and I had some um, bracelets that I did over top. So the bracelets by itself wouldn't be. As, as visually pleasing. So I added the flowers in the corner and there, you can see that they're, yes, they're, they're not fully there. They're sort of like, you can see half a flower and part of some petals to add some interest. And these are books, these on the top here, these are just books that I had. Um, um, these, the, the, this actual bracelet company, she uses pages from old books that might be ripped and she makes beads out of them. So paper beads and these, these beads are actually um, pages from um, some of the books that are here, not the exact books, but some of the titles from those books. So I just added that for, for context. So I don't know if we're wrapping up. We are, we are wrapping we, up. As we wrap up, we just have one question. Sure. Well, we've had several questions, but it said it'd be great if Karen could answer. Oh, okay. How do you take a portrait photo to arouse the feeling of curiosity in the viewer. So hmm. I'm going to just add a little bit. If that could also be the assistance of the model using her facial expression and eyes to that's, help. That's right. Yeah. So you could um, you could have them half off the screen. You could have them looking at something like like what is that? So the 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 viewer is like, oh, I wonder what she's looking at. Um, you know, she could be half hiding um, 
text, you know, maybe it's, it's it's like this, right? And there's a couple of word, there might be a couple of words here, and you're like, oh, what book is she reading? I want to know what book she's reading. The, those type of things um, could arouse the viewer of, uh, like, arouse the, the curiosity of the viewer for sure. Yeah. Hope that answers the question. Maybe not so much. If I am unclear, message message me and um, we'll connect. Um, um, and I'll try and help uh, clarify that answer. Okay, so. Yeah, thank you so much everyone for, for hanging on here. It's just yeah. so much information. And <laughs> it is a lot of information, isn't it? But if anyone else has any questions who's here, just you can raise a hand and then we can let you in. Great, yeah. Ash, I'm glad I, I could help you. Okay, Gail, go ahead. Um, I just wondered, um, I'm interested in street photography. Mm -hmm. um, and I wondered what settings to put my phone on so that I'm ready to take a shot. Ooh, that one. Okay, so street photography, um, there would be different types of setting only because it could be daytime, it could be nighttime. It oh, could be daytime. Be daytime. Okay, so you could have a lower ISO. Um, and if it is it, um, are you doing buildings or are you doing people? People. People. Okay, so. Um, something like uh, a lower ISO, um, you could do the port the um, portrait setting. Oh, what kind of phone do you have? Uh, Samsung. Okay. Okay. So S do you have S eight S something like that, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah try using the portrait mode. Um, okay. And when you're in portrait mode, you might have a guide like a square. Um, yeah. that recognizes people. So you would tap on that section that that in the middle of there, and that will focus, use the, the tell the camera to focus in on that person. Um, right. So you could use that for your street photography and that can be used for any, any type of photography. If you've okay. got the guide and you want to focus in on that person, then you would just tap that person. And then with the portrait mode, it blurs out the background a bit. So if you have buildings, it shows Excellent. that you're you're on the street, but it doesn't show the exact um, building, for instance. And you're focusing your my my focal point as a viewer would be that person. Fantastic, thank mm. you. You're welcome. Thank you, Gail. Shirley. Hi, Shirley. Hi. Thank you for this wonderful overload information. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. It is a lot. When Jen asked me to do this, I was right. like, okay, I don't know if I can fit this in an hour. Right, and 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 my I have an LG G8, and I have no idea of the manual, and it, I never use it. But now I'm going to experiment. Awesome, but, awesome. But really my question is this: I have a lot of art that I painted myself, mm -hmm. and I find that when I take photographs of this, the painting, the color is not accurate. Okay. The photos is are taken. The photos are good, but mm -hmm. it's just that it's not accurate. Represent. Okay. All right. If you're using a lamp, for instance, um, that has a yellow tinge to it, it could throw off the colors of your painting. Um, if you want true colors, um, try taking the picture with just natural light. So no, no, I mean, normal daylight, for instance, mm -hmm. and then you can use a, um, an editing app to um, lighten that photo if you need to. Um, or you can use, you know, you could prop up your painting by a window um, with the, with, you know, the Bristol board or the reflector on the other side to light, lighten up the whites if you, for instance, have whites in it. And that'll be more true color. Interesting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Yeah, I'd love, I'd love to, I'd love to see it. So if you guys, if you guys are testing out your photos and things like that, tag me in Instagram. Um, I'd love to see what you have, what kind of results you have. Um, I, um, I didn't have it here on the slide, but if you join me before, I have more workshops lined up. I do. If you live in the GTA, I'm bringing up some mini branding sessions, some headshot sessions. And if you guys are interested, and tell me in the chat if you want to do a photo challenge with your smartphone. What is a photo challenge? A photo challenge is where I would, I, I would, you would keep an eye on your email and I would send you, uh, you would sign up for this photo challenge. And then what we would do is have a, um, almost like a, 
a list of things to challenge yourself to using your cell phone, like um, go find a, uh, I don't know, a blade of grass and take a picture of that, or you would post it, you would tag me, and then see how you could see what other people are, how they're interpreting a blade of grass. Maybe it's on top, maybe it's one blade of grass, maybe it's um, grass clippings, for instance, and everybody can share with each other um, how they're interpreting that specific um, object or item that I've provided you with a challenge with, and you're using your cell phone. Um, I like that. Yeah, you like that? Okay, so in, in, all right, so in the chat, say challenge, and then we'll make, make a note that you want to be part of the challenge. And um, it won't be, it won't be, um, I'll, I'll develop and I'll set it up for uh, maybe in the summer or the springtime, um, later in the spring. Um, and then we can, it might be a private Facebook group, or it might be just on Instagram um, with a certain hashtag. Um, but yeah, if you guys are interested, definitely put in challenge into the chat and we'll, um, we'll set it up. Right. Yeah, Great. For sure. Thank for you sure. so much. You're welcome. Wow. Oh, look at that. So thank you everyone for joining. Again, we're going to email all the information and links to Karen. The photo challenge is amazing. And as you were talking about that earlier, I was looking to see programming for the border crossings project this summer for workshops at if we can offer them, maybe we can do photo challenge outside with Karen at Arendelle Park or something. And yeah, it's like our absolutely. Where yeah. we can go in and we can do that. But I agree. I think it would be great. Let's think about a photo challenge for April break. April March. Oh, break April family. break. I might have something up my sleeve for That's that, great. Jen. Yeah. So, yeah. So um, I want to thank you, uh, Jen. Thank you, Jen, and Border Crossings, the Art Gallery of Mississauga, for inviting me to um, do this workshop. Uh, I thank all of you um, for joining me and helping or accepting my knowledge, um, although. Technology isn't my friend with the, the scraping the pen marks across the, across the screen. Um, uh, this is an example of a silhouette. I, we had the sun behind us and we were having fun at the playground. So um, having fun like that, have fun with your camera. Um, again, digital cameras are great because you can delete them if you don't like them. So, um, but make sure you back them up. That's another, back up your photos, definitely. So thank you. So if you have questions or requests, bookings or anything else, um, go to my website and use the contact us form. Um, fill out the information there and let me know that you attended this. Put AGM uh, participant in there so that I know that you um, that you are there and um, or here. And uh, I'll, I'd love to connect with everybody. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. I will again will email you. This link will be on YouTube. And yeah, hopefully uh, reach out to Karen because she can teach you more one-on-one. Yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to share my knowledge. That's that. Okay, yeah. enjoy the day. Go outside. Yes. Or it rains or snows or you never know. And take some photos. <laughs> Far from you. So yeah, take photos. I want to see. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Have All a right. wonderful day, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Jen. You're welcome.